Hey, we are live. We are live. We're live. Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's good to be back with you. Hey, this is Brian Ayers, a.k.a. Uncle B. And today we are going to be talking about something that's highly important, very important. Let me adjust this a little bit. Get a little height on me. Um, so that, you know, we're all healthy and all that good stuff. We're going to be talking about blood flow. Hugely important. Hugely important. I am glad to see Folks on the call already, let's go ahead and uh, get into some things. Of course, um, this is what we do here on this channel. We talk about sexual health for men. And uh, um, and if you're in the chat room, go ahead. Just let me know where you're coming in from. Uh, I'd appreciate that. Hey, what's going on? Damon, what's going on? Good to see you again there, brother. Um, we are going to have ourselves a good time. We already got a question in there from Kenneth. Kenneth, I'm going to get to you in just a little bit. What's going on with you, Anthony? Good to see you there. Um, and as always, I want to give a shout out to my team, the, the folks who are behind the scenes, making sure that we get all this goodness going on, that uh, I, I stay on task, <laughs> that uh, things work out. Um, and just one thing that you know we're all very much aware of is that uh, we... We have the worldwide, <coughs> and so <laughs> there are new strains of the worldwide, <coughs> which is going to be causing more problems. So you know it's best to get to your healthiest self, your healthiest self right now. Um, get healthy now, and you know one good thing about that is that spring and summer is going to be off the chain because as soon as people are able to get out, you know it's going to be uh, very interesting. Uh, so you want to be you know at your best. At that point, so take this time, take this winter of discontent <laughs> to get your stuff together. Uh, but yeah, tonight, tonight we're talking about what I call the blood flow vital 11. It's those 11 things that you need to have going on in your life on the regular so that you can uh, have a good life, that you can have a good sex life. You can have your blood flow. You don't have the erection issues and all that good stuff. Hey, what's going on? Hassan, Michigan in the house. All right, Junior Pierre. Palm Beach, Florida. All right. Love it. Love it. Uh-huh. Red ginseng. Okay. We're going to get to you, uh, Hassan. All right. What's going on with you, Juan? Good to have everybody on board. Hey, uh, if you have not done so already, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up sign so we can make sure we get the, the YouTube to work with us, get this video out to as many guys as possible. We want everybody to be healthy. You included. Me included. All right. Wichita. What's going on, Alan? Hey, Albert, Albert, Mr. Young, how's it going? Steven, Oklahoma is in the house. Love it. Uh, we're coming from Hyattsville, Maryland, right outside of Washington, D.C., which is on <laughs> lockdown right now. <laughs> but that's a completely different show. All right, let's go ahead and hop into it. Uh, Keith, what's up with you? What's up? <laughs> Mike Brown, what? Ohio, in the house. Tyrone Brooks, love it. All right, good to see all of y'all. Keith. Mr. Payne, love it. All right, so tonight we're going to talk about increasing that blood flow and what, how that helps with your health and your energy and just having stronger erections and above and above, <laughs> above all, avoiding erectile dysfunction. We don't want to have that in our lives. We want to be able to function the way that you want to without a problem. So I'm going to break down those vital 11 blood flow issues. Um, the great thing is that uh, eight of them are completely free and one of them is instantaneous. <laughs> it just works automatically. So uh, once again, this is Brian, a.k.a. Uncle B, um, for the last... 21 years now. I've uh, been the sexual performance coach with African Fly, the liquid aphrodisiac. Um, and so with all of that, I learned a lot. I want to share that information with you. And so tonight, specifically, <laughs> we're going to be talking about the main factors in blood flow movement and how you should think about it. And this is very important because you wanted to work this into your entire lifestyle and how these 11 things work. Um, as always, a video came out earlier today. If you missed that, the video came out at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you get that information. Uh, I'm going to go through the stuff that we had uh, from that video earlier to make sure you know I, uh, uh, I get it all out. There's some extra things that you know typically we don't have enough time in uh, video to get in. So I want to make sure you get that information. So uh, EJ, <laughs> will blood flow increase your size? Yeah. <laughs> Very much so. You need it. You need it. All right. Over oh, Brooklyn in the house, without a doubt. Will Smith. Will Smith is on. <laughs> uh, how 
How is it good for people with diabetes? Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Very important for guys with diabetes. I'll hop into that uh, in a moment. So let's go ahead and break this down. So when we're talking about blood flow, the condition of your blood vessels, that's very important. I mean, it's like, like living pipes. Uh, that move, you know, it changes over time. Uh, they're living pipes. So if they are weak, then the blood is not being helped along. Um, if they're clogged, then it takes longer to move things along. You're, you're slowing down your body. And in both cases, uh, you have less nitric oxide to move things along. So just to get it, if this is your vein, your blood vein, inside of here, uh, there's a coating, your endothelia. And it releases nitric oxide. For my guys who go to the gym, you know what nitric oxide is because you probably have popping them pills and thinking like, oh, I got nitric oxide. No, your body's already making it. Um, you just need to take care of your body and it will uh, keep on giving that nitric oxide so you get the blood flow going. Nitric oxide increases, it dilates the veins so it allows blood to flow through. And if you don't have this together, if all of this, it's a downward spiral. If your blood flow is not working, it's a downward spiral on your health overall. So you want to make sure you're always paying attention to it. Um, the condition of your blood. This is also important because, hey, you got the pipes and you have stuff moving through it. And if it's sticking together, your blood platelets can stick together. And if it's sticking together, it's not going through smoothly. It's not your blood isn't flowing correctly. Um, and it also shows that there is not enough oxygen uh, going on with that. So uh, you need more oxygen to your system. Uh, the condition of your body, of course, that makes a difference. So, you know, you all of this plays in together. When we're talking about your organs, when we're talking about your liver, your your kidneys, uh, uh, your spleen, <laughs> all of these things are soaked with your blood and it needs to they need to be functioning correctly for everything to be functioning correctly for you. Where is that coming from? <laughs> OK, uh, we got random sounds coming. All right. Um, yeah. And also the condition of your body. Obviously, that's important uh, when we're talking about your muscles. So we're going to go deeper into the muscles. If your muscles are not conditioned, then it's going to be harder for your blood to flow through. Um, and so, you know, just think about it. if you don't move, what happens? You, you ever seen someone who uh, has been bedridden? If they don't move, your body literally starts falling apart. They, they actually have to move you around on the bed. Otherwise, all, the, all types of things go wrong uh, from your skin and everything else because your blood is not flowing. Uh, hey, what's going on, Marcus? What's going on, Fred? Appreciate you joining us here. Uh, <laughs> how you make your salad? OK, we're going to talk about that, too. We're going to talk about the salad. OK, so let's talk about how you should think about this. Your blood flow needs help to flow. <laughs> Once again, that laying down thing, there's no help to flow. Your body, your heart is going to pump but it needs that help. Um, so if you're taking medication for blood flow, there's a huge problem there. Um, because first of all, if you're, you have to take medication to get your blood to flow, well, that's horrible for you and great for the pill companies because they can sell you more and more of this because if your blood isn't flowing, you're going to die. So obviously they can keep selling you blood flow pills forever. Um, so you don't want to get trapped in that circle. You want to take the things I'm saying, put it into your life so you can avoid being addicted to these uh, these drugs and now call it opioids. Back in the day, we just straight called it drugs. <laughs> You're a drug addict. Um, and if you have blood flow issues, you have a lifestyle issue. It isn't like, let me get another pill. It is you have a blood flow issue. What's going on, Zach is uh, Mr. Williams in the house. Um, Levi. All right. Good to see you there, sir. L. Arginine. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. All right. So, uh, so once again, if you're not getting this blood flow, you are on the downward spiral. And what does a downward spiral lead to? It's a straight pattern. We're talking about you got aches, then you got pains, then you have to go to the doctor. What's the doctor going to do? It's going to tell you about some pills and they're going to give you the pills. And if you don't do this stuff correctly, then it leads to surgery. And then, you know, of course, you have to keep going back to the hospital. All of this ends up being with what? Bills. Um, just because you don't have your blood flow uh, going correctly, your insurance is going to go up. All of the things that can possibly go wrong, go wrong when your blood isn't flowing. So let's get your blood flowing. So we're going to talk about here's the blood flow. Vital 11. So we have deep breathing, fluid intake, eating well, getting the proper herbs, uh, sleep, exercise, yoga, muscle relaxation, taking a break. Take a goddamn 
break, man. <laughs> Massages and uh, smoke breaks. So we're going to talk about all of those. I'm going to break them down really quickly here. Uh, I see we already got a bunch of questions in the in the chat room. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, EJ, that's a funny one. Uh, deep breathing is by far the most important thing there is you can do. This is that number one thing I was saying that it is not only free, but it's the fastest thing. Obviously, if you can't breathe, all your blood flow stops. So um, you're surrounded with this energy that we call air. You're designed to inhale it. So the deeper you're breathing in, it has huge effects on it. When I talk about deep breathing, I uh, did a video on it before. Make sure you check that out. But we're talking about inhaling when your stomach expands out like a baby. And the reason for that is because your rib cage encaps and close your, your lungs. So when you breathe, your lungs are going down. It pushes your diaphragm down and it moves your stomach out just like a baby. Most of us breathe up here in our chest. So, you know, uh, it's chest breathing, stress breathing. So you want to be able to breathe and let your lungs expand as much as possible. What does that do? It gives your, your stomach an internal massage that helps your immune system. Um, it helps flush out toxins and above and above. Above all, in terms of blood flow, the great thing that it does, it gives more oxygen to your blood. You get more oxygen to your blood, it stops sticking together. The blood plates will start sticking together. It, start flow, it starts to flow better. And this isn't like some mystery breathing technique. It is literally breathing in, breathing out. That's it. That is literally it. So you can do that right now. In fact, I encourage you to start breathing. Uh, it was, for some guys, you may start feeling a little lightheaded because you haven't breathed, do, have, haven't been doing this enough. And one of the things that for people that smoke cigarettes, um, you know, they, they get that hit of the nicotine, but also you're breathing in deeper than you normally do. So that's the reason why so many people stay with smoking cigarettes. So uh, let's keep going. Though. Um, when you're breathing out, when you're breathing out, you're actually breathing out waste. Uh, I always say when you're losing weight, where does it go? It's coming out of your breath. 84% is coming out of your breath. So that's waste that's coming out, CO2. Uh, so let's get into the other thing, water intake. Water intake, obviously very huge because you're basically made of water. <laughs> so you want to get as much water uh, in. We're not talking about sugar drinks. We're not talking about sodas. Uh, less so with fruit juice. If you want to get the fruit juice, try to get it fresh, squeezed, organic, as close to the real deal as possible. And of course, don't go overboard with it. And energy drinks are out. Stop it. <laughs> Stop. I don't care if you add alcohol to it or not. That's just making it worse. <laughs> Stop with the energy drinks. Uh, your body is designed to have energy. If you have, if you need to take an energy drink, two things. One, it's addictive. Two, it's not helping your body. It's slowing down your blood flow. Uh, and what does this feel like when you don't have enough uh, water in your system? It feels like you're in a desert. You're going to feel anxious. Um, you're going to feel fear, like what's going on, insecurity uh, and depression because your internal body is saying, I'm in a desert. What's going on? We need water. So make sure you get that water into your system. Um, and also with the water intake, the way to tell uh, as far as the water is just looking at your urine. Go take a whiz and you will see <laughs> if your urine is light, pale, light, yellow, pale. That's great. You have uh, as much water in your system as you need. If it's dark yellow or syrupy, get to some water. Hey, Corey. Hey, Corey. How's it going there, sir? All right. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll talk about that in a second. All right. Um, and also just remember your body is mostly water. You're talking about 60 percent of your body is water as an adult. Your bone bones, which we think are just hard. They're actually 31 percent water. Uh, lungs, 83 percent water. That's how we sucking in that water, <laughs> sucking in that air, um, that H that the oxygen helping with that H2O. And of course, your blood is 92 percent uh, water. OK. Uh, and so you want to eat as much water as possible. Fruits and vegetables, mainly fruits, <laughs> especially when we talk about uh, peaches, mangoes, pineapples, they're 80 percent water and the melons, watermelons, um, they're 90 percent water. So it's great, uh, especially when we talk about uh, watermelon has a lot of L-citrulline in it. Very good for your system. It's called the natural Viagra for a reason. It has a lot of water in it. Uh, and so when we talk about different herbs, uh, 
I'll just, just quick. Samaj Jackson. Yes, African Fly is on Amazon. Check us out there. Um, when we talk about herbs, let's talk about some of the basic ones. We're talking about ginger. Ginger aids in digestion. Um, it's actually one of the herbs that's in African Fly. Uh, go to cola. Um, decreases blood pressure in your veins. So that's a good thing. So it opens up your veins, to allow more blood to go through. Cayenne is an aid in digestion and it improves, improves circulation. Uh, we have thyme and turmeric. All of these different herbs work uh, in terms of helping with your blood flow. Hey, Jarius, what's going on with you? Okay. Uh, and of course, African fly. Ting. <laughs> Hold on, let, me get, let me get it right there. There we go. Uh, African fly, it does help with uh, uh, increasing your testosterone and increasing your blood flow. That is the reason why it's highly recommended for uh, making sure your erections stay strong and healthy. All right. Uh, when it comes to sleep, sleep is highly important, highly underrated by a lot of people. You know, it's like, I'll sleep when I'm dead. Well, you're going to reach that point sooner than necessary. <laughs> so sleep is actually repair mode. Um, and that's what you need you need the repair mode uh, for your body. So poor sleep can lead to a buildup of art, um, of cholesterol, fats, and other substances in your arteries. So you wanna make sure you're getting that good sleep. Um, this causes the arteries to harden and restrict blood flow. Uh, one study shows that less than six hours of sleep per night can increase the risk of uh, building up arterial sclerosis by 27%. So you don't want your veins to get harder and smaller. That's leading to uh, an early demise uh, and it's not necessary. So go ahead and get your sleep. This is one recommendation I have for sleep that I'm using a lot now. Um, you can just hop on to YouTube music, uh, type in binaural beats, it's B-I-N-A-U. R-A-L, binaural beats. They have it for focus. They have it for sleep. I use it for sleep. It is amazing. You know, it's just a, a, a tone, just tones, and it just helps you. <laughs> it helps you a lot uh, to go to sleep. All right. So let's go from the sleep side to the exercise side, because exercise is king when it comes to blood flow. Breathing is God. <laughs> exercise is king. So movement moves blood. Very simple. So the more you're moving, the more blood you have to have moving, the more your body is going to adjust and repair uh, with that situation. So you want that. And the most important thing we, here, we always talk about high intensity interval training uh, because that's good for increasing your testosterone. Lifting heavy is good for increasing your testosterone. But when it comes down to it, I don't care if you're just walking, as long as you're being consistent, consistency is the key because, you know, you're just telling your body the more stress you're adding to your body, your body's like, oh, OK, uh, I think I know what to do now. Uh, I need to adapt to this stress by improving blood flow. So that's what you want to do. Make sure you get that in. And one exercise uh, routine that you should definitely get into, especially as you get older, is yoga. Yoga gets your blood flowing. <laughs> it's very important to get that yoga in. Um, it's, it, it, has relaxa it helps you relax. Uh, so your circulation is better. Um, it helps with movement of oxygen through your cells, um, better functioning cells as a result. And also all that twisting that you're doing is bringing fresh oxygen to your organs. So you want to make sure you get your yoga in and just some of the positions, you know, that downward dog position where you have your hips above your heart, above your head. That's called inversion. So basically, now you have blood flowing the opposite direction than when you're just standing up or just laying down. So uh, the different movements in yoga very much help with blood flow. Um, and just as another thing for yoga, they say in Ayurvedic medicine that you measure your age by your flexibility. I believe that's very true because if you look at someone who's older, they typically are much stiffer. So you want to avoid that. Uh, that stiffness just shows a stiffness of arteries and veins. Blood flow. Let's get the blood flow going. All right. Um, muscle relaxation. This is important and it's easy to do. This is one of those three things right now. You can do that breathing. You can do this relaxation. Just think about it in terms of like, am I tense? A lot of times we sit in positions and don't even think about it. Uh, relax your shoulders. I mean, when you're doing meditation, typically they, they do a body check. We're talking about relax your forehead, relax your eyebrows, relax your eyes, relax your nose, relax your mouth, relax your neck, going all the way down, relax your left pinky toe. 
You need it all to be relaxed. Um, and, you know, if you need to take a hot shower, you know, things like that, you want to keep your body relaxed so the blood is flowing um, and you don't get too tense. Um, and one other thing that's very important is to take a break. Yeah, <laughs> take a break. Your, your job is still going to be there. All the headaches that go on in life are still going to be there. You do need to take your time for you. It's highly important. Um, you know, do a staycation, you know, go to an Airbnb. You know, you want to get into some meditation, get into prayer, get your music on, whatever it takes for you to get better. Because if you don't do this stuff, you are going to end up with blood flow that's not going to be working for you. You're going to get older, stiffer, faster. It's that simple. All right. Ah, uh, Luis Hernandez. Oh, yeah, we're going to get to you this, sir. All right. Massage is one of the things you have to pay for. That's it. Out of these 11 things, eight things you don't have to pay for. This you want to pay for. And I know, you know, oh, my girl, she gives me massages and I give her massages. We're not talking about that type of massage. We're talking about the type of massage where you have to go study. I didn't even realize this. I had a, a friend who went to massage school. I didn't even know there was such a thing as massage school. But, you know, if you do massage incorrectly, you can actually injure a person, especially if you're trying to do that deep kneading and uh, 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 Swedish massage, sports massage, Thai massage, all these the several different massage types. And you want to have someone who's experienced in it so you don't get injured. Very important. Um, and also smoking. When it comes to smoking, don't. <laughs> and, and we know about nicotine. We know about its effects, the cancer, all this other kind of stuff. But the one thing in terms of blood flow, smoking does slow down your blood flow. And it also it harms the arteries. Um, so now you have thicker blood going through damaged arteries. When it comes to erections, that's horrible. <laughs> and the, that's you, you need the blood flow. You need everything to be working down there uh, correctly. So make sure you're following these steps and also getting off of that. Now, uh, someone from the comment section earlier had asked um, from the from the release of the video earlier today, asked about smoking an occasional cigar. It's not what you do some of the time It's what you do all of the time. So, you know, if I have a cigar like once a week, once every two weeks, no problem. If you're smoking daily, huge problem. If you're sm smoking every other the day huge problem because you're doing it all the time you want to cut back as much as possible i understand you want to live your life enjoy but you also want to live <laughs> so uh, uh you want to live in a healthy state so let me go ahead and break this down in conclusion so we can get to these great questions oh yeah man i have not seen that i smoke herb trees is that bad <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to talk about that in a second, sir. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. All right. So uh, in conclusion, so the deep breathing, fluid intake, eating well, obviously eating well. Uh, herbs, you want to get the, the, those herbs that I talked about, the, the thyme, African fly, all of those different things for you. Um, you want to get your exercise in, obviously get that yoga in. Uh, sleep, highly important, of course. You want that muscle relaxation. You can do that right now. You can do that breathing. You can relax your muscles right now. Uh, and of course, take that break. And while you're taking a break, go ahead and get a massage. <laughs> All of that will work. And when it comes to smoking, you don't want to do that. <laughs> you want to stop uh, uh, all bad habits, but especially with the smoking. So, uh, so there we go. So let me just say this right quick before I hop into the questions. Of course, as always, um, please go ahead hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the thumbs up. You know, the more people we have spreading the word about, you know, how men need to be healthy. I was actually having a conversation earlier and it's like it's sort of weird. Um, it took me a long time to get used to being a sexual performance coach and actually getting on YouTube and talking about it because, you know, I got a family. And it's like, what are you doing with this? But then as I talk to more guys and I'm realizing that a lot of this information has been missing, people have been getting sick, uh, have had problems in the bedroom, didn't know what was going on. We need to spread this word because there's not a lot of people talking about it. For ladies, they have shows and they will talk about everything you know they talk about tampons all this other kind of stuff as soon as a guy steps up and starts talking about uh an erection it's like oh my god no why are you talking about erections it's like yo we have to live 
You know, would you want your father, your brother, your son, your uncle to not have the information so they can live a healthy life? That doesn't make any sense. You know, I'm not sure where the, 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 the stigma came from, but we need to end that um, right away. Uh, if you want to check out AfricanFly.com to get more information about African Fly, we also have the videos up there. We also have um, blogs. We're actually going to be uh, increasing the number of blogs coming out. We want to make sure you guys get as much information as possible. So, uh, And also look out for uh, the book Go Hard. We're finishing everything up to get that out to you guys. Go Hard. I'm going in the book. I'm talking uh, about a lot of information. Some of the stuff I'm saying here, I know it sort of flies past. We're talking. We want to get it down to print. So I made it uh, it's less than 100 pages. I wanted it to be as easy and as digestible as possible. You can just go through a chapter like, oh, yeah, I forgot to do that. That's what I need to do. That's what I wrote the book for. So uh, that's enough of that. Let's get to these questions. Hey, and I appreciate all of y'all with these questions. All right. Uh, hmm. All right. Let's get into it. Uh <laughs> Oh, all right. So here we go. Uh, Kenneth Brown, black seed oil or BLK maca oil work? I would say yes. Uh, I got some black seed oil right over there in my cabinet. Um, here's the thing that I say about all herbs. A lot of times, you know, people are like, uh, I just want to get the, you know, this specific herb. Does this herb work? Your body is different from anybody else's body on the entire planet. <laughs> so you're going to have to try it out. Um, a lot of things work for a lot of people. For some people, not as effective. It also depends on what stage of life that you're in. Um, different herbs have different types of effects on you. They're in the same class, like ashwagandha um, and, uh, uh, and maca are sort of in that same class if they can help as a libido, but ashwagandha does it a different way in terms of relaxing you, and maca gives you more energy. So it, it just depends on what you're doing. Uh, so yeah, I would definitely say, go ahead and try the black seed oil. Um, be consistent with it. You know, when when I say be consistent, it's like first you want to test and just make sure it's okay with your system. Don't go overboard all at once, but uh, over a period of time, this is these are herbs. They're not pills where it's like, oh yeah, I'm just pills are designed to do one thing, and it'll, the rest of it will be fucked up. That's just the way pills work. So you want to be very careful with that. Uh, Mr. Brown also asked, do sit-ups work? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely want to get as, you know, whichever exercises and you want to be consistent with those exercises. So that makes a huge difference. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I'm going to get that. That was a cryo chamber question. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, will blood flow increase your size? EJ asked that question. And yes, yes, blood flow uh, will in increase your size. Now, when I say increase your size, I did a video about penis enlargement. It's not, we're not talking about doing that whole, uh, four, increase yourself four inches in four days. Cause you're going to a hospital for that. There's no part of your body should be going four inches in four days. Um, but in terms of being able to increase your size by 20 to 30%, because typically most men are sitting down, they're not moving enough, not getting enough blood flow. When you're sitting down, you're actually sort of separating the top half and the bottom half of your body. So the blood flow sort of stagnates. So you want to uh, do whatever exercises to be consistent to get more blood flow going. All right. Uh-huh. Uh, is red ginseng supplement good for sexual strength? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of those ones. Once again, you want to try it out uh, just to see how it works for you. Uh, how is it good for people with diabetes? What is good for diabetics? All right, so one of the issues with diabetes is that for uh, most guys who have diabetes issues, they also have low testosterone. So you want to increase your level of testosterone. Um, obviously, with African Fly, it helps increase your testosterone. One of the early investors in the company was a diabetic. Uh, and a family friend. And so he uh, used African Fly and it worked for him. So uh, that can work. But when we're talking about diabetes, I always say this to people who ask me that question. Please realize that you can be cured of diabetes. I know the industry is telling you, no, that's impossible. Keep buying our stuff. Yeah, you can be cured of diabetes. You can be healed of diabetes. Uh, the reason why I say you can be healed and not cured, because cured means it's not going to come back. Healed means that you did the right things. You changed your lifestyle. So it's gone away. And as long as you keep doing that, it'll stay away. Okay. <laughs> mm. 
What about Ronald? What about people who have to take injections in the penis to get an erection? Ouch! Um, that's not a good thing um, because it's a temporary fix. So it's sort of like Viagra. It's like that Viagra, once again, it's a pill that's supposed to do one thing and it fucks up everything else. So, um, you know, if you're just taking, taking a, a, if you're doing that, you're, that's the symptom. Not having an erection is a symptom. You need to take care of the causes of that, which could be the EC system I always talk about, E-S-E-I-S, energy, sleep, exercise, intermittent fasting, and your soul. So if you're off on these five categories in any direction, if you're, you know, you could do everything good and only sleep for three hours. Your testosterone didn't get a chance to build while you were asleep. You're going to run into a ton of other problems. So, you know, you, you want to do as much as possible to heal yourself so you don't have that issues. Um, Junior, Pierre, how do you make your salad? Oh, here is the thing about salads. I'm glad you asked that question. So I, I really love salads and I've started loving them even more because, hey Vance, can you hand me that, my rack? Oh, yeah, that one, mm-hmm. I've been meaning to show this before for a while. Here we go, here we go, boom. This is how you make a salad. <laughs> you see these herbs, these are nothing but herbs. This is not seasoning. Uh, seasoning tends to be, um, you know, you have a whole bunch of salt added into, you know, Lowry seasoning type of stuff. They just add salt in with the herbs. Um, when you get into straight herbs added to the salad, it changes up the texture, the taste. You can just keep, you can dump it in there. I mean, I go through uh, my spice racks pretty quickly. And also one thing that people don't do, they don't add salt to their salad. Salt to salad? That's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you not add salt to salad? You add salt to everything else. So the issue with salt, of course, is we tend to have too much of it. Salt is not bad for your body, but when you have too much of it, it's bad for your body. But in terms of, you know, you have the goodness of a salad, you know, the, the leafy vegetables, all this great stuff, season it up. Make it taste good. All right. Uh huh. So here we go. Here we go. Uh, What's the difference between with nitric oxide veins and high blood pressure veins? Both opens if you're on blood pressure medicines. Um, hmm, that's a good one. What's the difference between with nitric oxide veins? No veins. I'm sorry, you're saying no veins? Or not, no veins and high blood pressure veins. Both opens if you're on blood pressure medicines. Okay, uh, I don't want to speak too too much to this because we're talking about medication uh, and I am not a doctor and I don't play one on YouTube. So um, what you really want to do, I mean, when it comes down to it is try to get off the blood pressure medications. Once again, it's going to help in one area of life, but in the other area of life, it's going to cause problems. You know, whenever you hear those commercials before, remember back when those commercials, the, the med medication commercials first came out and you have to remember, United States and I think the Netherlands are the only two countries that allow these commercials to come out, uh, medication commercials, because you don't go to a corner drug dealer and ask them, hey man, what kind of crack should I use today? No. <laughs> so we have commercials telling you to go to your doctor and you know, what's that thing that they know about? You constantly hear about doctors saying, hey, you keep reading about diseases and you develop it. <laughs> it's because it's in your head. Well, someone's constantly telling, do you have a problem, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, yeah, I do. Well, the problem is that you need this drug. No, it's not. You need to go to sleep. You need some exercise. <laughs> you need to relax. Uh, but yeah, you want to be very careful with the with uh, with medications because it went from we got the TV commercials to remember they the TV commercials used to say the the bad stuff really fast. May cost. Now they take their time and got somebody running through fields and stuff like that, being all happy and on some drugs. So you have to be very careful. These people are, uh, they want your monies. <laughs> That's for real. They want your monies. All right. F busy. What's going on with Archie? Uh, your message got retracted. Please ask that question again. What's going on with you, Tyrone? All right, Junior. Glad you like that answer. All right. Um, uh, what is your take taking what if you're taking citrulline and l arginine uh they're both great they're both great i hope you're getting it from a natural source uh watermelon being a a great one um and nikki can you go back to that right quick i want to make sure i answer that correctly uh yeah so both of those uh 
increase uh, the increased nitric oxide, as I mentioned before, that nitric oxide needs to be in your in your system uh, to move the blood along. And so you're going to get uh, positive effects from it. That's the reason why they have the different pills for they have pills for everything. And it's not, you can just get it from the food. All right. Uh, and, you know, stimulating protein synthesis, decreasing amino acid breakdown. That's the reason why a lot of people are very uh, into these things for muscle growth. All right. Let's go. Good question, Levi. Uh, does metformin cause ED? So metformin leads to significant reduction in testosterone uh, levels, sex drive and indication of low testosterone induced uh, erectile dysfunction. The, off, the um, so basically, you want to be careful with metformin. That's <laughs> all it is to it. Uh, you want to get away from as many of these drugs as possible. So yeah, there are a lot of there are a lot of uh, medications that cause uh, erectile dysfunction uh, or weaker erections or lower libido. Once again, they are there for one thing and one thing only. So you know, and you have to. A lot of people are just like, I'm just going to take my doctor's word. We now have what's this thing called the Internet. <laughs> you are now on it and you can get uh, a ton of information uh, and look for alternatives. Don't just take uh, the person's word. I'm not saying don't listen to your doctor. Doctors are great at diagnosing. But when it comes to uh, prescriptions, that's what they're taught to do. They're not taught to get you know, your medication is your food. Let your food be your medicine. They don't believe that at all. Let your pill be your medicine. It's not a good idea. Uh-huh. All right. All right, Mr. Mallet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a virgin. I couldn't get it up with this girl. People say it might be porn or porn-induced erectile dysfunction. And others say I may just be nervous and was scared. What can I do? Okay. Uh, yeah. Relax. <laughs> uh, you know, things happen. Uh, you want to make sure if... Yeah, unfortunately, we're, since we're not having a full conversation, I can't get the full background uh, on it. But when it comes to uh, porn, uh, porn can cause a bunch of issues. And the issue really right now is that, you know, you can with your phone see most guys by this within three years of being looking at porn. You've probably seen more women naked than you've seen alive in your life. So obviously this is not the way that nature uh, intended it. The reason why you you want uh, the reason why you're looking at porn, the reason why you're masturbating is because you want to have sex. Not a problem. Uh, that's what you're here for. You know, the job and everything else is just a subset of your ability to you know you want to have sex. So um, you want to be very careful though when you're watching too much porn you're actually desensitizing yourself because the things that are happening on the porn is you know the the woman looks great uh and then she has her friend and then there's an octopus or something i mean it's crazy man <laughs> you know, it doesn't make any damn sense anymore <laughs> so uh yeah, it's 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 too it's overstimulating. Your dopamine is getting associated with the screen instead of with a human, so you're becoming desensitized. So I always tell guys to back away from the porn. Um, and, and you know the the goal here, the goal is to find a woman that you're sexually compatible with. So you don't have to go to porn. You can go to a person that you're really attracted to, that you really want to be with, who wants to be with you. Wonderful sex life off to the to the races <laughs> all right uh junior i smoke weed is that bad <laughs> mm. yeah yeah no yeah <laughs> here's the thing here's the thing okay um with weed this this it can it has an enhancing effect um but unfortunately the weed that's sold nowadays nowadays uh typically has a very high level of thc thc is not good for your erections also inhaling anything into your lungs doesn't matter what it is is not going to it's not good for you, you only thing you should be inhaling is air not smoke not fire this close to your lips <laughs> put that roach down man <laughs> So uh, you want to be uh, uh, you want to back away from that. Uh, it's in the end, it's not going to be good for you. All the things that you're, you know, thinking that, oh, wow, it's great for that. You you notice that. Check out a lot of rappers who back in the day and what, what uh, may say Mace said, uh, uh, not nah, puff. I'm a die high. 
Yeah, they don't smoke anymore. Jay-Z, nope. Nope. <laughs> All these guys that get older and it's like, oh, nah, this isn't effective for your life. One of the things that happens when you smoke a lot, you come up with great ideas that don't make sense when you're sober. <laughs> so, uh, and you can't execute on the ideas. Weed slows you down, so it messes with your life overall. So, uh, nah, it's not good for you. All right, uh, Mr. Jackson, Gary, uh, should African fly be taken with water? Uh, yeah, yeah, I would suggest that African fly has a strong taste. Um, we didn't cut it with anything. We want you to get the purity of it. And so, uh, yeah, you can add it to water. Uh, you can add it to, it's actually a liquid tea concentrate. You think about it, teas are herbs. And so this is uh, a tincture. So it's a, the, the herbs have been strained through alcohol um, just so you can get the essence of the herbs. So it's, a, a, it's more powerful, but you can just go ahead and add it to hot water, drink it like a tea. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark snapped. How long to deep breathe? Events. Getting lost over there. No, light, light. Like, there we go. Yeah, there we go. All right. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, how long to deep breathe uh, for the rest of your life? Yeah. I mean, there isn't really a reason not to do it. Uh, we've just been trained through stress over time not to do it. So even for myself, I, I have to remind myself, I have to think about it. One of the things I do as soon as I feel any level of stress, I've been training myself to just deep breathe. I, I'm looking for, looking for ways to have reminders already set up in my life. So coming to a red light, deep breathing. Well, that entire time there's... And once you start doing it for a period of time, you'll notice that you stop thinking about it. You'll just be doing deep breathing. So it's something that you have to train yourself on. Um, but uh, it, it, you know, when you say per session, uh, one thing I do is, you know, I'll do like 20 times just to get just to get the process going. And um, I don't do it anymore. But initially, when I first started doing this, I would do this with my hands to. And it just helped me with a count. So I hit my uh, my my 20 and, you know, it's off to the races. This isn't like, you know, a special secret to deep breathing. It's just deep breathing. So, you know, the more you do it, the more oxygen you're going to get in. The number one thing to remember is that your stomach needs to move in and out while you're doing that breathing. OK, uh, Michael Johnson. What about high blood pressure? Uh, yeah, high blood pressure is not a great thing. That means that your veins are not in good condition and or your blood is really thick. So uh, and so your your heart is really working hard <laughs> to get blood throughout your body. And if you don't get the blood throughout your body, you know, your lip, your organs are missing out on blood. Your brain is missing out on blood. So you want to uh, you want to get your veins to not be small to get larger. And you do that with the exercise, with the sleep, with the getting the right herbs. Uh, African fly actually helps to dilate the veins, uh, helps, which helps with nitric oxide flow, blood flow, et cetera, et cetera. So, yep, uh, you don't want to do that. Uh, all right, Mr. Hernandez, how about the guys that work third shift? I've been working third shift for 21 years. What can I do? Uh, what kind of advice do you have for them? So uh, when you're saying third shift, I'm assuming that you're meaning that you're not getting sleep at night, I'm assuming. Uh, so basically, yeah, here are a couple of things to do. Uh, if you're sleeping during the day, you have odd sleeping patterns. You need to make your sleep quality as high as possible. As I mentioned earlier, uh, binaural beats, you can just go on your phone, YouTube music, search for binaural beats. Um, they have some videos that are played for like eight hours and just have that playing at a low um, pretty low, just enough. You can hear it just a little bit and go to sleep to that. It'll help you go to sleep. Um, you want to get, uh, what's the words I keep calling them blindfolders, but basically it's a, uh, it's a night mask. It's like, you just put it over your eyes. So you're not getting extra light in, uh, even when your eyelids are closed, light is coming through. And because we live in a, such an electrical situation, we have, you know, uh, the, the, your, your, Clock light is on. There's another light over here. There's a pineal gland right there in between your eyes and it can sense light. And so it doesn't if it's sensing light, it's like, hey, we're supposed to be weak. We're supposed to be paying attention. That's 
that's how you wake up. <laughs> so you want to uh, make sure that your uh, that your eyes are completely covered so you get the higher quality of sleep. Uh, try to be consistent with time you go to sleep. Uh, don't drink and go to sleep. Don't smoke weed and go to sleep. Uh, don't eat and go to sleep. You want to have your body as rested as possible when you go to sleep. That higher level of sleep um, that will allow you to, whether you're on third shift or whatever, you, you'll be good. You'll be good. I hope that answers your question. All right. Uh, Corey, gosh, man, what is considered a hard erection exactly? I see in adult movies, the erections point toward the sky. Should my erections be parallel, pointing to the ground or pointing to the ceiling? Ideally, uh, 45 degree angle, it should be pointing up. Um, and this typical, in, in everyone's body is different, so it doesn't apply to everyone, but that shows that uh, your, your core is tight also. So if you have a, a loose stomach, then your erections are not going to be at the, the height that it should be. Um, and one of the things about your erection being up like this is that the woman's clitoris, and everyone, woman is different also, uh, is sitting there at the top. So if you're up, you're actually rubbing that clitoris. She's getting more sensation out of it. Yeah. Get that core tight there, brother. Uh-huh. Uh, Will Smith. Fresh Prince. How can we, how can you start a diet to go with your blood type? Um, well, first of all, you just need to know your blood type. Uh, but there are diets for that. We actually work with a chef, uh, Chef Shao. Yeah, I always say his name. Sorry, sir. Um, <laughs> but uh, we're, we're probably going to start working with him soon again um, because that's what one of the things he does. He works with athletes and, and he matches their blood type with their diet. Um, and so that does have a huge effect. Um, Chef Shao. <laughs> Thanks, Nikki. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll have more information on that. We'll probably do a, a, a Another segment. We did that in the webinar uh, with that with him. OK. Uh, we talked about the metaphor with Tyrone. Um, all right. What about people who have sickle cell, which is a blood issue? Um, unfortunately, I, I don't uh, can't speak directly to that. I don't have enough information and don't want to. Uh, I don't know at all. Sorry. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's something we'll check out. Uh, but. Let me let me give you just a little bit of information really quick. Uh, significantly lower testosterone levels are common in male patients with sickle cell disease and have been attributed to either abnormal abnormalities of the hyperthalmo pituitary axis or primary testicular failure. So basically, you need some more testosterone. Uh, Obviously, you know, I would recommend African fly, but there are definitely many other things that you can do to increase your testosterone. You definitely want to pay attention to all of the different methods. You want to get your exercise in, you want to get your sleep in, uh, and you want to make sure that you're eating as much energy as possible. When I say energy, I'm talking about live fruits and vegetables. Uh, that'll definitely help with your condition. Uh, Alberto Colin. Hey, Uncle B, is meditation good for blood flow? Um, yeah, yeah. What it does, it relaxes, uh, it relaxes your brain. And so, I mean, and this is important. You may think like, you know, if your brain isn't relaxed, that means you're not relaxed. You're stressed. And so what basically happens, you're going through the day dealing with stress. You look at a brain wave. It's, it's just all over here, just just up and down, up and down constantly. When you're doing meditation, it slows it down. It allows your body to relax, allows the blood to flow freely. Um, and you actually think better. And that's that's one of the things that's very interesting about the human body is that the changes that come come so naturally you don't notice. I just uh, saw a video of a man who is 95 and he works out daily. And he said, you know, he started working out at like 78, something like that. And he, the reason why he started working out was because he had back problems and started working out every day. And by month three, he was like, oh, I don't have any back problems. And I've experienced that myself in terms of like, there are things that uh, I'm sitting there just trying to be healthier. And the next thing I know is like, oh, that isn't a problem anymore. I didn't think about that. I used to wake up with aches. Don't wake up with aches anymore because I started doing the right things. And so, you know, it'll be very gradual. You won't even uh, notice. Okay. Oh, Harvey <laughs> Weinstein. Weinstein. 
Such your name for real, Harvey. All right. Uh, <laughs> Uncle B, is a carnivore diet less detrimental to my long-term erection quality if I stick to grass-fed beef and organic eggs? Nope. <laughs> um, you're not a carnivore. <laughs> I don't mean to say it like that, sir. Uh, you're not a carnivore. <laughs> Carnivores eat animals alive. You can't do that. I know Wikipedia says it. Doctors say it. It makes absolutely no sense. You look at an animal. How do they eat the food while it is alive? They're tearing through flesh, through fur, getting to it. You cannot do it. You say, I have canines. You do not have canines. Have an argument with a dog about your canines. See who wins. <laughs> a dog will tear through your flesh. You cannot tear through that, that dog's flesh. So uh, what you're ending up doing with the so-called carnivore diet is actually a zombie diet. You're eating something that's dead. So eating death, yes, you can survive on it for a long time. I was eating 200 animals a month uh, about three years ago now. And so, yeah, you can do it and live, but you're going to end up with a whole bunch of issues. So whether it's grass fed, whether it's fed with, I don't know, <laughs> it doesn't matter what, if it was born in the Himalayas and fed by Buddha himself, uh, it's still, you still got to kill it and to eat it. And that's going to cause you problems in your body. No question. All right. Uh, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I understand that. I understand the whole thing with the meat. I, I, was, I was there. I was killing them. Ooh, I can't go to hell. Ain't nothing but chickens waiting for me. Uh, is, a, is a penis pump bad for us and does it help make it bigger? Um, I've heard recently some, some newer information about penis pumps. Me personally, I'm saying be very careful with it. It's one of those things you, if you want to try it. Uh, but if you... If you get nerve damage from using it incorrectly or, you know, then it's nerve damage down there is problematic, period, because you're very sensitive down there. And, you know, when you have a nerve damage down there, it's like it's going to take a good long while for any level of repair to happen. OK, ah, you're welcome, Mr. Hernandez. All right. Uh, Tyrone Brooks is 582, a good testosterone number. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a very good. I mean, the uh, a goal is like 800. Uh, you definitely don't want to be down by 300, 300 or 400. Uh, typically, when you're sitting there at um, uh, 300 or 400, you're really at a, on our scale of one to 10 sexual performance scale, scale of one to 10, 10 meaning everything works. One, zero, one meaning nothing works. And five is where most guys are. If you're at a 300 or 400, you're sitting there at that five. So things can work and not work. You know, your erections are unreliable. So at 582, you're sitting there like a seven or an eight, uh, closer to an eight. So things can be, you know, you can have an erection on demand. If you get to an 800 or above, you're talking about the possibilities of morning erections, spontaneous erections. You're a, you're a freaking teenager again. So uh, yeah, you want to do what you can to increase your testosterone as often as possible. Okay. Oh, make sure I didn't mess up my mic here. All right. You're welcome there, Corey. Uh, <laughs> hey, thanks, Easy. Appreciate you. Uh, Jermaine Green, Uncle B, does African Fly have its own website? Absolutely, Afri AfricanFly.com. We have a ton of information on there. We got videos, we got blogs. Uh, we call it a, a boutique site. It's a site that that's the only thing we talk about is African Fly. We want to make sure you, it's a great product. We want to make sure you get as much information so you make the right decision. You're using it correctly. All right. Coolness, coolness. All right. Uh, Maurice, what about high cholesterol? Uh, it's not a good thing. So cholesterol is throughout your entire body. Uh, the issue with cholesterol, we talk about good cholesterol, bad cholesterol. Literally, you're almost just talking about dead cholesterol, a lot of cholesterol. So what ends up happening is if you're uh, eating a diet high in saturated fats and cholesterol, basically animal products, um, you're going to have more cholesterol and it's not going to be good for you. Your body already produces cholesterol. You don't need to uh, add to it. So uh, cut down on the, the, the meat eating and that will help lower your cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, and you'll be all to the good. All right. Let's see. <laughs> Archie, can you do that song again? <laughs> 
Oh man, uh, beans, greens, tomatoes. <laughs> ah, you have to watch the video. I, I, can't, I, I used to be a rapper. I used to be able to do stuff, spit off the top of the head, top of the dome. That's, 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 that's not as much anymore. Uh huh. Uh, Zach is Wilson. You mentioned dark singing. <laughs> I've been told to sing the song. I can't do it. Can't do it right now. Um, you mentioned dark chocolate a couple of shows ago. Do you mean Baker's chocolate or dark cocoa? You want the dark? Is it bark or dark? Bark or cocoa? You want the uh, as dark as you can get it. Um, typically, what we're used to eating is the milk chocolate. Uh, and that's when they're adding other ingredients to chocolate. Chocolate, the dark chocolate, um, when it's not too sweet, is actually uh, it's good for you. It's, it is healthy for you. Uh, but once again, it's one of those things you don't want to go overboard with it, and you don't want the type that's just ridiculously sweet. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Do we have any more questions, guys? We're coming to uh, close to an hour. I want to make sure I get any more questions answered. Can I use African Fly with working out? Oh, heck yeah. Oh, yeah. I do that all the time. All the time. Uh, because it increases your testosterone level, it's going to give you that level of stamina. You'll be able to run longer, lift more. So, yeah, definitely use that. Uh, and the great thing is that like, even for my... My guys out there who are athletes, um, you could take African Fly. If they're looking for your Hembe um, in particular, you do want to be careful. Check with your, your, you know, everybody has different rules and stuff like that. So, yeah, but definitely work it. Use it with your workout. All right. Uh, let's see, what else do you have here? Haven't seen African Fly on Amazon. And you know what? We, we've been having some issues with Amazon selling out over the Christmas uh, season. You know, we have COVID and uh, Amazon sales went up like 600%, something crazy like that. So um, things that have been sending out through the mail, we've had problems getting stuff to Amazon. We're going to work it out. Um, I'll tell you what, uh, if you're having problems getting it from Amazon, of course, you can get it from us. You can go to the website. You can use the coupon code AF15, African Fly 15, AF15, to get a 15% discount. Uh, we'll make sure to get it as soon as possible. Uh, we just... We're sending, sending in more paperwork. <laughs> We're just chomping at the best way to get back on, on Amazon. Uh-huh. Do you recommend taking zinc supplements to increase testosterone? Uh, yeah, zinc does help. Um, obviously, it's better to get it from your leafy vegetables. Um, but one of the things you want to be careful with with zinc is not to overdo it. Um, you want to make sure you know that the, the milligrams that you're getting uh and also you want to make sure that you're eating uh food with it because those zinc i've done it on an empty stomach and it was horrible it, it just tore through my stomach uh so be careful with that all right uh what is the best way to increase dopamine go for a run just enjoy life that's what dopamine is all about so um you know, as you're doing that, your brain is going to release that dopamine. That's going to help with blood flow and all types of things. So, yeah. Can you deep breathe during sex? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to have to do it. I have to. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do. Uh, there is a deep breathing technique that I've used before um, that I, I have to uh, uh, pull that back out of my memory to, to use. But it's in, is incredible. I actually just we were both. Had our clothes on, I was laying on top of her, told her about the deep breathing technique, and she nearly had an orgasm. Actually, no, she did have an orgasm without any interaction other than I was just laying on top of her. So, yeah, that's a, thanks for the reminder. <laughs> I'm going to do that one. Uh, Kenneth, Mr. Brown, do you get headaches taking African fly? No, no, you shouldn't get a headache at all. If you do, stop. Uh, African fly is here to help. Uh, if, um, I'm not sure why you would get a headache while taking African fly. I haven't heard of anybody doing that. And I've been taking African fly for the past 21 years, 22 years, actually. So never had a headache. So, uh, uh, you know, I'm slightly different. I, I take aspirin. I get a headache. So, <laughs> uh, hmm. Um, Mike Brown, not sure how to answer that. Uh, okay. Uh, is it okay to take African fly with sea moss and D3? 
I'm not sure what the D3 is, but uh, with CMOS, yeah, uh, I got some CMOS coming. Uh, we're actually going to be partnering. We're looking to partner with a, a company to do uh, to provide you guys with CMOS. It's very powerful, has a ton of nutrients. So yeah, definitely. Uh, there are, you know, the, the better you eat, the more, you know, there's other herbs and supplements. We're actually going to be coming out with other herbs and supplements along with African Fly to make sure you guys have the full range. You have options uh, to get to the best you possible. That's what we're here for. All right. Uh huh. Let me see. Uh, Aaron George from St. Lucia. How often can I drink beet juice? As often as you want to. It's beet juice. <laughs> it's, um, I still got some in the refrigerator. I'm going to drink right after this. So beet juice is great. Um, helps increase your performance by a good 20%. So, you know, of course, you don't want to overdo anything. But, you know, beet juice is great. I don't think there's a, a problem uh, in doing that. Uh, all right. Uh, Mr. Mallet, I'm doing no fap and being porn free. Good job. To increase my sex drive and testosterone, what else can I do to get erections for sex? Um, stay healthy. <laughs> really, that's it. Uh, one of the number one things in terms of the most direct effect on your body is food because you're consuming something. Your body has to react to it. So uh, you want to be very careful with what you're eating. The more energy you consume, the better it is for your body. It's that simple. And, you know, I always say the craziest thing about um, we talk about the ECS system, E-S-E-I-S, -E -S, energy, sleep, exercise, intermittent fasting and soul. The last one, your soul, that's the part that's hard because eating fruits and vegetables obviously makes sense. Getting good sleep obviously makes sense. Exercise obviously makes sense. You, we know for a fact, your mama knows <laughs> for a fact that you do these things, you're, you're going to be healthier. It's what we've been taught that's the problem. Uh, so you want to make sure you are doing that. Um, and Mr. Wilson, D3, okay, vitamin D, got you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't recommend vitamin D, D pills. I would recommend getting into the sun. Uh, your body makes vitamin D when you're in the sun. In fact, if you're... Um, if your chest is exposed and your genitalia is exposed to the sun over a period of time, a few days, uh, a couple of weeks, something like that, your testosterone levels are going to go up. Uh, what was that question about CMOS? What is that? Um, CMOS is actually from the sea and uh, it actually has a lot of dense, it's one of the most densely nutrient uh, uh, foods that are out there available. Hey Vance, can you look in that cabinet? I think it has some CMOS in there. Uh, look at the toward the top. Uh, no, 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 it's not there. Okay, yeah, I had CMOS myself <laughs> here, uh, but yeah, not yet. Um, Jason, I drink a lot of Propel water. Is that bad? Uh, I prefer you drink water. <laughs> Propel water is one is sitting in plastic. Uh, two, they've added chemicals to it. Uh, not necessarily for your health, more for you to buy more of it. So I haven't had Propel water. Is that sweet? Is Propel water sweet? I think it is. Um, so anything that you're in, in, ingesting that has a bunch of sweetness to it, um, there's some people who just drink Gatorade like it's regular stuff. I don't understand that. But Gatorade is just like salt and sugar. So it's addictive. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, it's working with your electrolytes. Water. You can just get the water. Uh, oh, Propel is not sweet. It's no, not all Propel is sweetened. Okay, it's alkaline. Hmm, okay, yeah. Uh, just drink water. <laughs> you can be good. Uh, cannot sleep. What can help? Um, I mentioned before, binaural beats, B-I-N-A-U-R-A-L. Go to YouTube. Uh, music. Uh, they got some videos that play for eight hours. You want to listen to that while you're sleeping. You want to get, have your eyes covered and make sure no lights come in. You want to uh, sleep on a regular pattern. Um, you want to make sure you have all electronics turned off and away from you. Uh, don't sleep with a dog in the room or uh, things that will interrupt you. Make sure you get your uh, go to the bathroom beforehand. You want to avoid any disturbance in your sleep. Your sleep should be your 
is your rest mode. Your sleep is your, uh, your healing mode. That's when you're healing. That's when your body produces the testosterone, produces the HGH, all of that good stuff. So you want to make sure you're getting that good sleep in. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, we got a message held for review. What's going on? All right. Uh, pro you service. Okay. Uh, is masturbation without orgasm harmful to erections? No, no, that's fine. You're actually uh, building energy uh, when you're doing that. Ideally, you'd be doing that with uh, with your, your girl, your lady, whoever. But you want to uh, uh, buy just a form of semen retention and you can actually build energy for that. There's a whole history of study of that practice right there. Uh, so, no, it's not a bad thing. You're actually building uh, energy. So, uh but of course, it's better to uh, have sex and not just masturbate. Okay. Uh, huh, huh, huh. All right. So we're running over an hour here. Uh, let me just go ahead and we're going to knock a couple of things out right quick. Uh, 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 that's a difficult one. So jam curtain one. Is there anything that helps after having radio, radiation therapy, radiotherapy for um, prostate cancer? Um, I'll do a video on that. That's, uh, that's a little bit deeper. I don't have all the information off the top of my head, so I don't want to give you any bad information. Of course, just try to be as healthy as possible, obviously. Uh, so you want to make sure you recover from that. And you also want to think about, is there anything that you were doing in your pattern that caused you to have prostate cancer? And so you want to start reversing that. Sometimes you go to the doctor, we'll get the pill, we'll get the surgery, we'll get all this, the, the therapy, and still go back out and do the exact same thing. And so you're going to continue running into problems. So uh, what is that issue that you have? Uh, Patrick, can I use turmeric powder with African fly? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Not a problem at all. It's a good one. All right. Uh, all right. Cool. Cool. Guys, uh, I want to thank you very much. Um, <laughs> what's the best foods to eat to shorten your refractory period? We literally just did a video on that. So uh, that video is coming out in two weeks and it will answer that question. We actually talk about the supplements uh, that will help with that. So uh, turmeric, thyme, a uh, couple of the supplements off the top of here and some things you can do also to help with your, your refractory period. Uh huh. All right. Bitter colonet. That's fine. Mm hmm. Uh, that is fine. All right. So, hey guys, uh, we're coming to an end here. Make sure uh, you go ahead, you, have, you subscribe to the channel, you get the notifications turned on. You want to make sure you're getting this information on a regular because, you know, we have some guys like Damon, shout out to Damon. We have uh, a bunch of guys who come back regularly and that is a great thing because you're going to get the information. It needs to be, you've been taught so many wrong things that you need to get the right information repeatedly so you get it. You're going to hear something slightly different like, oh, that's what I need to do. So you want to get that. So I want to thank everybody for hopping on, joining with us. We are going to be going live again next week, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Thursday. And of course, 9, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's when we come out with the new videos. You want to look out for that. Thank you, Jerry. I appreciate you coming through again. As always, Will Smith. Gotta love Will Smith going. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> what type of schooling did you have to go through become a teacher? Um, my experience is that I've been doing this for the past 20 years. So uh, uh, when we first started selling African Fly, I realized that it wasn't just a product that was needed. It was information. So research, 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 and some more research and life experience. Uh, what I could tell you uh, when I was when I was just 10 years ago. Is not what I could tell you right now. Just learned a lot more. So there we go. All right, Junior. Appreciate you. Double cup. Appreciate you. All you guys, we are done for this evening. I'll see you next time. Appreciate you. Uh, if you want to get that African fly, use a uh, coupon code AF15. But until next time, this is Uncle B saying, get your game up. Go hard. Peace out. Later. Ten, nine.